Hi everyone, Joel at Co-Break on the Stay Hungry podcast and today I've got a very, very special guest for you. Welcoming Chris Thomas from Yonder Agency. Hi Chris. Hey y'all, how are you? Yeah, right. yeah, good, good, yeah. Uh, I've got some bad news for you, but kind of good news. So All the, right. the good news is you're the 102nd Co-Break Stay Hungry podcast. Dude, that's amazing. The bad news is you were going to be number 100. I oh. know, I know, I know. So. I literally saw, I was uh, listening to your 100th episode, mm-hmm. and I was like, oh, congratulations, by the way. Thank you. I mean, you. pretty much you spent 100 hours doing a podcast and talking. Uh, I don't think a lot of people realize that. It's like, there's a lot of hours that go into recording a podcast, doing all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So. It's uh so yeah, congrats. Bummer that I'm not your hundredth because who doesn't want to talk to a country kid uh, on your hundredth podcast? Yeah, you are our first American guest. So am I really your first American guest? You're our first American guest, bro. Right, th- this is like genuine excitement because great. Now I'm speaking for all of America. Right yeah, now, it's all on you, and I love that. It's all on I you. I love it. So, um. I've been stalking you a little bit, but can you just okay. tell us who you are for for our listeners? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm Chris Thomas. I'm the founder of Yonder Agency. We're a uh, boutique digital marketing agency. So we help clients from small businesses to Fortune 500 companies. And uh, I'm a small town kid. Uh, was uh, raised in the mountains of North Georgia. Okay. Uh, and uh, I got rid of my accents. I had a very country accent okay. as a kid. And, uh, so yeah, I just really, uh, I went into agency world for a little bit and, uh, worked in the nonprofit world, um, for about 10 years. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to go, uh, into corporate and made that transition. And I was like, you know what, I'm tired of making these corporations large amounts of money and I want to help the small business again. And, uh, so here I am, uh, yonder is literally coming up on its, uh, year birthday. Uh, oh, happy birthday, month, actually. Happy birthday. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're, we're good. We didn't close. Uh, it's probably the dumbest thing ever to start a agency during a pandemic. But uh, why not? You know, so but uh, yeah, I've been freelancing and running a small agency for the last four years and uh, really decided to say, hey, look, I'm gonna hire the right people that are smarter than me and really grow this thing and uh we're doing the opposite that everybody else is doing of scaling down and you know tearing back and all that we're we're just exploding and saying hey look let's hire the right people and bring on the right staff and help businesses grow online yeah that's awesome so this has caught me really off guard because um one of your people reached out to us to get you on the podcast and uh obviously start checking you out a little bit i'm at like a country kid from the uk this is what a uk country accent sounds like so okay. yeah, uh, yeah. i'm from a small village in in the south Shropshire hills near wales um i went and worked for big agencies i went and worked for big big brands got sick of it started my own agency and here i am today so i yeah, the, that's great. the parallels are wild and <laughs> And then I thought, oh, I'll go check this guy out. Right, okay. So he's a, he's, a, he's a big guy with a beard. He wears glasses. I usually wear glasses. He's merched up yep. his agency. Our agency are all merched. Yep. He's, like, he's, yep. all, he's all about values. He's all about ethics. He's all about using proven technologies to give small businesses the kind of benefits that big businesses have had for a few years. Uh, uh, like with the same person from opposite sides yeah. of the pond it's really weird and then and then i was like oh and he loves barbecue too right i'm in i'm in so all right did we just become best friends well, yeah 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 is that is what's happening right now i love that uh, that's great well you know to be honest i'm the first generation american on my dad's side okay and uh so i'm half scottish right so i have a very uh i yeah so we were planning a big trip to Scotland and London and, and, uh, so yeah, it's, it's kind of funny. Like a lot of people just, I, I love the fact of like talking to folks in the UK. I have a lot of friends over in the UK and, 
Uh, so I don't know. We could be cousins, man. I don't know. That, that yeah, yeah, maybe. Maybe, okay. maybe we'll go for tea with the queen one day. That's that's right. <laughs> Who that's knows? Great. So I love it. I having stalked you. You describe yourself as a design and user experience specialist. Over over yeah. twenty years experience in the industry, working for some major global brands. So are you happy to say about some of the brands? you've worked for yeah absolutely yeah so i've uh i worked with uh, coke apple uh back in the day i uh, worked with nike and so i'm kind of old school um before the ipad and all that kind of stuff i was building prototypes for large banks to do online banking and then uh the e-commerce side so really trying to help uh figure out how these major brands sold online mm -hmm. right which is so bizarre to think about right now and you're just like because everybody sells online like anybody can sell online and um i'm probably forgetting some brands i worked for uh my favorite one of my favorite cl clients back in the day weber grills which is a barbecue thing yeah yeah uh, if if weber is listening i will welcome any sponsorship but anyway, <laughs> anyway uh, not if they don't sponsor so, us first I, <laughs> yeah yeah so sp sponsor these guys and then uh yeah uh so yeah man just be able to to be in the room with like incredible people uh, with these incredible companies. I mean, as, as designers, we look up to, you know, the Nikes of the world and everything else mm -hmm. because of their design and because of the brand mark. And um, yeah, it's just super bizarre. I go from working <clears throat> with all these brands and uh, to working uh, for a barbecue joint right down the street. They're one of my favorite clients and uh, they make good food. So uh, it's really kind of been the full gamut, but, um, yeah, my background is designing experiences for apps and for websites for large, uh, corporations, and then, uh, turning around and selling that app to other corporations, uh, that, that just fill a need. And so basically I'm doing the same thing in my own agency. I'm turning around and saying, Hey, this is what you need and let us build it and then turn around and selling it, basically. Awesome. So. Awesome. So today we'll be talking about kind of marketing strategy for small to medium-sized businesses. And Love it. one of the things that we encounter a lot as an agency over here, I don't know if it's the same in the States, is that essentially small to medium-sized businesses don't think they have access to the tools that the big boys have access to. Right. That's not right. true. <laughs> no it's not it's not true at all yep yeah uh i every client that comes in the door they they say i can't afford this uh i can't do it and i just go look you you can and this is how we're going to do it for you and really realistically people kind of go wait a minute so i can do automation i can do these great looking websites and i'm like yeah you can have a great looking website but the problem is does it convert mm -hmm. right? does it tell the story that you want to portray so people buy your product or come in the door and everything else. And so that's really what I love about Yonder yeah. is, you know, people come in the door and we're, we work with everybody. We don't really, you know, everybody goes niche down, niche down. And of course we would love to niche down, but we, we have different companies and different walks of life that come in and I go, Oh yeah, well there's a solution for this let me show you how to do it. And, uh, yeah, if you, if you're in the small to medium sized business right now, today, you could build a website, have an email automation, a CRM tool to track how everybody's going through your pipeline and sales and everything else, and literally have a 24 seven salesman at your fingertips. And it just takes education. Yeah. Um, our biggest thing at yonder is we, give guidance insight and people trust us that's our three biggest things when people walk through the door and um if you're not guiding your customer and not educating them they're not going to work with you uh i don't have a walled garden of information like you can go to my website and download stuff for free or look at all the stuff that we suggest because we had to learn it at some point sure and i'm not going to pretend that i came up with this stuff and might as well give it away yeah we, we take that exact attitude to you know our blog our giveaways our vlog our podcast and essentially the difference between us and the p other people that have access to the information is we do it, it 
the only difference is that we we deploy it um yep and we can i guess choose which bits of the information we need it, it that love it um yeah so <laughs> you, you've caught me out there a little because uh we don't niche on clients either we we did start right. by niching on clients um because we thought maybe we could help customer facing businesses more than we could anybody else so you know restaurants yeah. hospitality um mostly because they appear on the surface more fun um yep. yep and then it panned out that actually the only thing we can niche by now is kind of business owner so as long as they're receptive to learn receptive to um building a relationship then they qualify to work with us essentially uh, and, and there are some yep. people that, that don't some people that want to tell us how to do our job and that's fine there'll be an agency for them but it's it's not us so um so yeah i just i read through your websites read all these things and i was like okay there's a there's an agency in america and their website's the same as ours what, what's going on so it's, <laughs> we uh we took everything that you guys do and we just Americanized it and, uh, yeah, made it it's, better. It's, it's been, yeah, it's been wildly successful. So, <laughs> thank, thank you for giving away. Your, yeah. No, I mean, I, uh, checked you guys out too. And, uh, me and my, uh, co uh, counterpart partner, we were, it's funny, you guys, you, you have Andy and I have a gym. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's pretty funny. Uh, but we were, we're looking at your stuff and we're like, this is so weird. Like, we should figure out some way that we can collaborate because we have the same mindset, but which is refreshing because most agencies don't have the same mindset that we have. Yeah. Right. Um, because a lot of agencies are like, well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to share how I set up an email automation because another agency is going to steal it. Well, the problem is that the reason why that agency is stealing it is because they don't know how to do it and they're going to pretend they're going to do it. And I tell customers this all the time if they go well we're going to go with the cheaper solution and i don't say it in an arrogant way i go great you go with the cheaper solution that's totally fine we'll see you in three months and they just go <laughs> well, well wait a minute like what do you mean see you in three months because we know that they're not educating you as much as we're going to educate you before you even sign the first check yeah. and a lot of times those customers kind of back off and go Am I about to waste money? And a perfect example, I, I mean, I had this happen uh, with a really large company or large client, large company. And uh, they were like, oh, we're just going to go with this cheaper solution. And I was like, okay, cool. And I I, I kind of was like, uh, I'll see you around. I'll see you probably about 90 days. Uh, I said, because they're they're not going to be able to deliver all that within 90 days. And they're like, oh, no, no, we can, we can. And I was like, okay, cool. Day 88. Uh, I get an email and it says, Hey, can we chat on? And so I purposely waited until day 90 to respond. And I called him. I was like, so, uh, you ready to come over to yonder? And he's like, yeah. Is there any way you can lower your price though? I'm like, yeah, I can't man. Like, cause price like, is fine. You know, yeah. yeah, exactly. But the other thing is they spent all this money for the last 90 days and they lost their budget. And I was like, look, and, uh, so we ended up helping them. We fixed some stuff, but, uh, cause I'm not going to be like that. Cause, uh, you never know when you help people that, uh, the return that's going to be, uh, later, but yeah, with, with the medium, the small businesses, um, it's really, you got to really research the agency you're going with. Yeah. Uh, uh, you and I both know, if, uh, there's nothing wrong with living in your parents' basement, but please don't tell people that you're an agency of 20 and, uh, it's really just you. Right. Yeah. Sure. Uh, yeah. 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 So cool. that, I won't get on my soapbox. Yeah. Well, no, but call yourself a consultant. Fine. I, I, I'm yeah, okay with absolutely. that. Absolutely. But don't don't portray to be something you're not. And I think uh, one of the ways we approach that now, and certainly this year, has, has been really good for us because we've done the same as you. When everybody else battened down the hatches, we jack things up. Um, yep. Is we just give out so much free information. We put ourselves on the line all the time. So I, I put my opinion out there all the time and, and people can throw stones at me. That's fine. But at yeah. least they know who I am. And the people that don't like it won't work with me. And I'm okay with that. And the people that do like it will really want to work with me. And they'll see that I've been way more transparent the whole journey than mm. nine out of 10 other agencies. So I love it. 
Yeah, it's, uh, I'm curious. Sorry, I'm, I know you're. I'm your guest, but I'm curious. Like, what? What? So, as far as like, do, do your small businesses and medium sized businesses have the same problems that ours have? Of like, how, how do we grow our email list? How do we grow our social media presence? All that kind of stuff. Is it kind Huge, of, is basically hugely, the same thing? Hugely, yeah. So I'll okay. I'll sit down with. Usually, we'll sit down with the directors of the business. That that, ten, that tends to be the case. And and I'll say something like, "Well, what's your lead magnet?" And yep, and they won't know what a lead magnet is. Right. Um. Which which is fine. So I then yep. so I'll say, okay, well, what's the reason for somebody starting a relationship with you? Yep. And they're like, well, we're good at what we do. Uh, uh, That isn't enough. Everybody says they're good at what they do. Everybody thinks they're good at what they do. It's and and then so so what you say, and I'm saying you you need to show people that they need you. Yep. And um, that's pretty much the start of every relationship we've we've made as a as an agency. Love it. Yeah. Well, yeah, I love when I tell people, I go, hey, what, what's your lead generator? What's your lead magnet? And they're like, they kind of give me that glazed over look. And I'm like, okay, it's basically a free offer of what you do to educate your customer. I was like, you educate who you are, like you educate your customer, then you validate with them, right? Mm-hmm. You validate, you know what you're talking about, and then you sell to them. Like if they go in and since we both like barbecue and I'm talking to different barbecue folks, uh, if you're selling a barbecue, you know, rub recipes or whatever. Right. And you know, you go to your website and it just says, you know, your life is about to get better. What does that mean? I don't know what that means. That the headline tells me nothing, Mm -hmm. but if you have a headline is your barbecue is never going to taste the same ever again, automatically know, Oh, I'm intrigued. It's that intrigue, right? Yeah. And then like you have that lead magnet, right? That says, Hey, three, three ways to have the best brisket on the block. Right. Like I'm going to sign up for that. If I'm a barbecue lover, sure. I want to beat out Bill down the street because he cooks his pork butt, you know, and everybody raves about it. So when I explain that people go, Oh, so you want me to tell the, and I'm like, yeah. And it's amazing to see the growth on from a barbecue restaurant to a spa to a large in life insurance company Yeah, that if they give away stuff, it comes back. And cause everybody wants this instant sale and uh, it doesn't happen. It's like literally like if I went on a, I'm happily married, but if I uh, went on a date right now with a lady and I go, Hey, you want to get married on the first date? She'd be like, what are you nuts? I mean, I can't even remember your last name. Like what? Yeah. You know, yeah. That kind of stuff. That's what customers are doing and or companies doing to their customers. They're wanting them to get married on their first date. Yeah. You have to, you have to tell them about something. You have to be able to be like, Hey, this is what I'm about. And this is how I'm going to help you. And all this kind of stuff. You gotta, you gotta court them a little bit. And, uh, you know, just wait at least three to four different touches, uh, touches dating. That's probably not right. But anyway, uh, just three, wait three or four times of the interactions uh, as far as like a customer to a client and they'll, they'll buy. You just got to be patient yeah, because they're, they're buying everybody else. They're looking at everybody else. So. Exactly that. And so we're working with our team at the moment about a uh, prospect journey. So about yep. uh, some people don't know what their need is. Some people know what their need is, but don't know how to solve it. Some people know what their need is and know how to solve it, but don't know who can solve it. Right. And, and you need to recognize where that prospect is because there's there'll be prospects ready to buy and there'll be prospects who are 12 months away from buying from you. And... Yep. Um, whether that's a marketing agency, whether that's an accountant, whatever it, whatever it might be. And oh, yeah. it takes the frustration away from the business owner. The business owner suddenly realizes, oh, okay, not everybody's ready to buy yet. I, I understand now. And it, it's really empowering when you, when you reach that point with a client and they, they can see, oh, okay, well, I can see where they are on the journey now. That's fine. I'm not going to be able to close the deal today, but 
I see the value. Oh yeah. Yeah. And to, to have the response of it's not a no, it's not now. Yeah. Right? Uh, I have a client right now and, and, uh, it's a very large, if we, if we close the deal, it's a very large, you know, uh, thing. And literally the, the relationship started almost four months ago. And, but they're, they're just making sure they're doing their due diligence and stuff like yeah. that. And, you know, my team is like, you know, when are they going to sign up? When are they going to do it? And I'm like, I was like, look, they're about to sign this big wicked check. Right. And we just got to, they just got to make sure that we're not going to all move to the beach and hang out and all that kind of stuff. And so, and actually execute on the, on the things that, that we know we were going to do. But yeah, dude, I, I, uh, I love this kind of stuff. I love seeing the light bulb go off in customer's eyes where they're just like, Oh, I've been missing out this whole entire time. And the fun part is you and I, we're on the forefront of all of this. And 10 years from now, every agency is going to be doing what you and I do, but we're going to be so far ahead and getting that because, you know, there's a difference and you, you can probably attest to this. There's a difference between a website company that's going to build a website. Mm -hmm. A website company is going to build you a beautiful website. Hands down. They're going to have the best designers. They're going to have the best developers. They'll put you on WordPress. They'll put you on Webflow, whatever. But the problem is they're going to produce that. You're going to turn it on. And then you're just going to expect clients to show up, right? Yeah. That That is not what we do. What we do is there's a website company and then there's a digital marketing company. There's, okay, we're going to build you a beautiful website, but we're going to put in the SEO, the lead content uh, offer. You know, We're going to put in organic social media posts. We're going to do email campaigns. We're going to do videos. We're going to do all these things because we know the strategy, the web, the web company that just spits out websites every single day and they have a routine. That's not going to get you customers. Sure. You need to kind of look at it, go, okay, what is the strategy behind it? And we're only looking at like a $5,000 difference because that $5,000 difference is going to make you 10 to 15 to $25,000 later down the road. Mm -hmm. Um, and we, I don't know about you guys. I, I didn't see this part, but we, we do video marketing sure. right? and, uh, it's such a huge thing that people are missing, uh, with their marketing because you can take a video. So like the podcast that we're doing right now, I right? know what you're going to say, but yeah, cool. <laughs> I know. I know. Right. And so it's like, I, I think people have, they're like, wait a minute, I don't know what to blog about. I don't know what to do or how to post emails or whatever. So right now we're doing this podcast together. We're videoing it. We're doing the audio. So right now we have an email that we can send out in the video clips. We have social media posts that we can just send out video clips again. And then all of a sudden we go, hey, look, we talked about how to help businesses grow. Sign up to get our you know, lead generator or whatever. Yeah. And all of a sudden you have a sales funnel. Yeah, like, sure. And, you know, do you want to start an agency right now, Joel? Let's just do it. Yeah, I think let's we do can, it. We, in, in the middle of the Atlantic, there's got to be work there. So There's got to be work there, right? But So we, we call what you just described content repurposing. So, yep. um, And it's, it's a fairly new concept in the UK. Um, okay. So we, we'll take a video and we'll turn it into 50 pieces of content. Easy. No trouble. Blows people people's mind. Yeah. Uh, and the reality is it makes our lives easier too. And I'm, I'm not afraid to, to say that. The, the original video has got to be good. But in terms of my team having to come up with blog content, having to come up with PR, having to come up with emails, having to come up with social media posts, it's all there. It's all done for them yeah. as long as the initial idea is good. Um, yeah. And... We're in a position now as an agency when, when we approach a new client, we, we can say, well, we're comfortable that we could have 200, 300 pieces of evergreen content ready for you in 90 yeah. days. And they, nobody understands how we're doing it, but yeah, it, it, yep. it, we've just systemized marketing. So Yeah, and keep, keep that secret. Uh, there's a lot of agencies that are trying to figure out 
how are you pushing out this content in 90 days? Like, how are you getting, uh, it's, and so I kind of keep that secret because it's kind of the most obvious is the obvious of ones, mm. right? Because if you think about it, movies have been doing it for a long time. Yeah. Movies, I mean, sports teams, restaurants yeah. to an extent. It's they've yeah. they've all been on it. The whole uh, car companies, and then absolutely. Uh, then you approach you know, one of our. Uh, I'd say yeah, one of our most successful clients was a very very dry accountancy company when we met them. Right. Uh, but they're three cool guys. They they they've got something different about them. They've got a bit of attitude, a bit a bit of spark. Oh, we, and we just and and what really what pulled it over the line was they they said we want to launch our own beer, and uh, I love that. I was like, okay, I can work with this. This is cool. Yep. Um, yep. And so they did. They launched their own IPA, and uh, it just blew up. The way we could repurpose that, the way either you didn't get it or you really really got it, and yep. if if you really got it you really wanted to work with them. And now, uh, I mean, they've just opened a new office quite local to us. And it's like Google in there. It's unbelievable because they've, wow. they've just gone. And I, I'm so proud wow. of them. And I just like that they've give, given, you know, and I'm grateful they've given us the template to show what's possible. And I love it. Yeah. That's, uh, that's what we're working on right now is our, is our like model client of like a before and after. Yeah. And uh, it's oddly enough, we're working on right now that I think they're going to be a, they're, they are going to be our model client. It's a tequila company. Awesome. Uh, obviously I can't say the name, but um, it's a tequila company and uh, family owned. And man, they're just so ready to, to go national and worldwide. And, and, uh, but you know, they just, they're working with folks that just, that got them to a certain point and now they just got to get them to the next level. And, uh, I can't wait to get my hands on that. And then I, you gotta love our jobs when we can yeah. drink tequila and beer. Right. And, uh, I was like literally a tequila tasting and I was like, this is my job now. This is great. I love this. Do you want to know something freaky? Let's do it. Tuesday this week. I was with a client <laughs> rum tasting cause we're about to launch a rum brand worldwide. That's amazing. That's amazing. God, we're so parallel. This is so weird. So fun. Uh, so much fun. Okay, I've got an out there question for you. Um, okay. Are you aware that British people don't know what barbecue is? I am aware of this. And so I have a friend of mine in London, and uh, I don't I don't think we've had this uh, this conversation yet because he just doesn't understand my exception my my uh, obsessed mind about barbecue okay uh so it's pretty funny but yes i am aware and uh because some folks think i'm talking about korean barbecue okay uh, and then some but yeah so yeah yeah so, so what, what's yeah i've got a real issue with my friends so um they said they wanted to come for a barbecue at my place and I said well okay but I'm gonna to have to get up at three in the morning and <laughs> and they're like what <laughs> what are you talking about and I'm like, yeah and I need to make sure I can find my temperature probes <laughs> and they were like what the hell are you talking about so in the it, over here in their mind you you put a steak on a grill that's a barbecue yeah and yep. you know um I for me because I'm I'm a geek in in UK terms for this I, I order like a pork butt from a, a reputable online butcher. I have to wait for that to come. I have to wow. marinate it, rub it, uh, and, and go through the motions. And so if my friends want to come for a barbecue on a Sunday afternoon, I, I really do need to get up at three in the morning. To <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and yeah. It blows people's minds. Yeah, I was about to ask, like, so the end result, what is that like for them? They're just like... It, do they want to do it? Do they kind of go? How do you? How do you get this to happen? They they don't understand the concept of sitting outside in whatever <laughs> weather, drinking beer at really <laughs> weird times of day, watching meat. They don't get it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so here, 
See, I would love that. I would love the reverse of that because a, here everybody thinks they're, and so just for your listeners, so we, we call our barbecue people that know how to really barbecue a pit master. Yeah, right? yeah, or yeah. A pit, a pit boss, right? Everybody thinks they're a pit boss and like th- they know that I love barbecue. I, I rarely, I do cook it. Uh, I, I do a pre mean Boston butt. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, but re- everybody's like, Oh, you got to taste my barbecue. You, you know, you love it or whatever. And I, and they're expecting me to give those like rave reviews because, uh, oddly enough, I'm going to be a keynote speaker for a barbecue conference next year. Amazing. That's amazing. Is, I, I need to know that, where that is. And I at least need to be able to tune in. So, Dude, it's going to be in Kentucky and okay. uh, some of the best place uh, best places in the world. But uh, so I just did a webinar for the same organization. And so anyway, I was telling the story of like people come to my house or I go to their house and like, oh, man, you got to have my barbecue. And I'm like and like their wife's like building it up. And she's like, oh, yeah, he wants to be a pit master and all this. <laughs> and I started. Oh, sorry, I'm getting chugged up. Uh, just think about it. But anyway, uh, they're like, can you, can you eat it? And it's like dry. It's not good. And I'm just like, this is tough. It's like, I'm like, and I'm like, Oh yeah, th- <laughs> this is good. It's great. Sorry. Hold on me. Uh, All good. Let's go to an advert. <laughs> Hi everyone, Fergus at Cobreak. If you haven't already subscribed to our podcast, what are you waiting for? Hit subscribe and be notified every time we release an episode. And remember, stay hungry. And we're back. I'm not very smooth at the ads. So It's all good, man. Yeah. It's all good. Hopefully hopefully I don't check the death. I'm gonna grab some water here in just a second. Cool. Uh so yeah, barbecue. Um nobody in the UK. I it's not true, not there are some very, very good barbecue teams in the UK, right? But, but it's still a it's a niche product. So I'm going to see how long I can talk about barbecue for whilst you wait to get a drink. So, uh, <laughs> so, so yeah, we're, it's coming. My introduction yeah. to the barbecue world was uh, a friend of mine from school started a barbecue team. So what what you would call pitmasters, I guess. Yeah. Um, and we used to have a really, really big tournament over, over in the UK. And if you won that tournament, you got to go to the World Barbecue Championships in America. So wow. they won that tournament and ended up get, coming fifth in the burger category at the World Barbecue Championships, seventh in the rib category, and I don't know, let's say 12th in the chicken category or something. Yeah, that's amazing. Um so they were flying the flag for barbecue in this country maybe seven or eight years ago, but nobody knew that it was a big deal. Uh, and, uh, and we were kind of like trying to push, don't, don't you realize coming, coming fifth in the burger category at the World Barbecue Championships against American teams is, is serious. That's, that's wild. And, uh, they, you know, they still they still compete a little bit from time to time. Uh, one of their main competitors has actually gone on to set up a really really successful restaurant, and it and it is starting to become a thing here. I wish I wish we had that. Like that that's amazing that you guys like one that is a huge accomplishment. Like because Americans, we love our barbecue, we love our burgers, we love all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and uh, that's that's awesome. I'm not surprised because like. Uh, I have a friend that's here in the States and uh, he took me to like a, a proper English UK, like London restaurant here in Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, it was just so good. Like they like, I don't know what I had, you know, he's like, this is most proper fish and chips uh, <laughs> like the States have. And, um, but yeah, I can't wait to come visit because I'm going to find a barbecue place and, uh, I, I just need to probably start a bar, barbecue podcast where I travel around, but especially right now with the pandemic, I can't really do it. But I got to figure out how I can get paid to go eat barbecue and then market at the same time. Like It'd be great. Man versus barbecue type scenario. Oh, yeah. 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 Hey, there is a, a Netflix series that you need to watch. It's Chef's Table Barbecue Edition. Just came out yesterday. Okay, I bet we haven't got that yet. We've got Chef's Table for sure, and uh, I've seen Barbecue Pitmasters on Amazon Prime. 
Um, yeah. But I guess Barbecue Pitmasters on Amazon Prime follows kind of uh, the state fairs. So it's yep. <laughs> yeah. you don't necessarily get a real representation of, of, of barbecue. <laughs> The luxury of places to go in the States is state fairs. It's not. Uh, <laughs> those are, uh, we call them here in the States, redneck uh, folks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't yeah. y'all have that term. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, most people don't have their teeth. Uh, I'm probably generalizing this. This is brutal. I mean, it's a good job this is going <laughs> out in the UK. This is. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Well, yeah. Uh, I, I can only say it because, like, I grew up in the mountains so but anyway yeah some state fairs are great here in georgia not so much uh but anyway uh we have a there's a yeah so anyway i'll stop there uh just in case this does go viral and uh in the states and i have to move to the uk because i'm banished but when it goes viral when it goes viral so that's true so i guess talk to me about um your kind of favorite moments with clients. So I get, we've already covered most agencies tend to treat marketing like it's kind of magic, like it's some sort of dark art. Right. There's a, there's some kind of hidden secret that doesn't yeah. sound like your approach. So what's happened in the last yeah. year that's been awesome. Gosh. Uh, so oddly enough, I, uh, <laughs> It's a small roofing company, right? Yeah. But this roofing, this roofing company was brand new. It was a friend of mine, and uh, they uh, they went from no website, no presence, nothing, and within so we turned everything on within fourteen days, I believe, uh, around twenty four thousand people came to the site, a thousand. Uh, clicks like from like people came so a thousand leads and I believe they converted like 30 or 40 of those thousand and it got so crazy they were just like uh, we just got to turn it off and still from the residual of the marketing and everything else they get like five leads a week or seven Why? leads a week it's crazy and so I used that one just because they went from zero to like hundred miles an hour pretty quickly. Um, and then, uh, probably another, another client was basically, they didn't know how to like, they had a product, their evaluation was pretty low and I kind of came in and redesigned their whole experience as far as like from the front door to the product, you know, that kind of sure. thing. And, uh, within like 60 days, their evaluation went up. They had investors like pop in. They're like, here's $60 million. Uh, and I was like, what the heck? And I was like, I almost was like, I should have done a rev share or yeah, something. That's my uh, slice. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's just like seeing, seeing stuff like that of going, you know, obviously they wouldn't have done it on their own. We got them to that point. And, uh, we still work with them. We still help them out. And, uh, they had to hire like internal staff because they were just growing so, so quickly. But, um, those are the kind of things that I love is just seeing like the before and after, like the true before and after, yeah. um, you know, because you and I both know, like we're the only people that use data to show this is what it was before. And this is what it was after. And when you see a client just go, Oh, well, that's, that's actual results. That's actual real things. Mm. And, uh, it's just a game changer. Yeah. And I think being, being bold enough to use the data like that, to just say, well, I'll I'll put my reputation on the line and I'll show you how much more traffic you get. I'll show you how many more inquiries you get. I'll show you how many more conversions you get. And I I think, I really enjoy when when a client reaches that point where they want to get their own marketing staff. I, I, I it's a bit masochistic, but I kind of. Right, right. But I'm like, yeah, the, the, this is awesome. And guess what? Now you can pay us to show them how to do it. So it's exactly. Of, uh, That's uh, what I ended up doing, and it was great. I was like, well, you know, it, it, yeah, the the numbers and data they don't lie. And the good thing is for us is like A B testing uh looking at heat maps and stuff like that i mean 
uh, there's so many tools and so many things out there that businesses could use today uh, yeah. with their current stuff. Um, and uh, for sponsorship reasons, I probably shouldn't mention the actual apps. But uh, yeah, it's just, it, it, there's so many tools right now that could educate customers even before they come to see us, right? Oh, hugely, like, yeah. Yeah, nobody's going below the fold, right, of my website. They're just staying right there. Well, why is that, you know? And um, yeah, it's just so, so much stuff. Like, I could definitely geek out on that. That's Oh, sure, sure. yeah. I, I mean, one of the old kind of heat map things was, did you know that most people tend to navigate to the top right of your website before they go anywhere else? And, and uh you say that to someone, and it's, it's like you've invented fire. Uh, they're, yeah. They're like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, if your most important piece of website real estate isn't in this area of your site, you're missing a trick. What? What do you mean? <laughs> I, I, I just yeah. wanted to put a nice picture there. Oh, no, sorry, not today. So, um, It's amazing. So one of your company values, continuously learning. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Talk, talk me through it. Yeah. So we, uh, for us, we never stop learning. Like we're, we're working on a video platform. Uh, we're learning how to like use video as onboarding and everything else. Um, we learn from other agencies every single day. Uh, I talk to agency owners just like you and uh, literally just say, hey, look, what are you struggling with? And, you know, how can we help each other? Um, there's so many ways to, uh, I, I don't know when you started, but like when I started 20 years ago or 15 years ago, and if I just had Udemy or YouTube or, or whatever, I mean, I've got a guy in my office that just started with us and he's in his uh, early twenties, graduated from uh, school or university, I should say. And, uh, basically I, I'm like giving him the tools and giving him all the stuff that's already out there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and he's like, Oh, here's a website that I just created. I'm like, dude, you just started like a week ago. What the heck? He's like, Oh yeah. The stuff you sent me, man, it was super awesome. I'm like, what the, and so, uh, for us, we just, there's so many books that, uh, we read to, um, and we're starting to read books together as a staff. Um, the ones in this will, and I'll go ahead and name them off. Uh, Power of Power of Moments, um, yeah, uh, which is really great. So a little summary about that is like the experience that uh, an onboarding of a new employee to an onboarding of a new customer. What does that power of moments look like? You know, what's that one moment that your customer or your your employee is going to remember that was different about you and you know, it's small stuff. Like, um, we're working on a thing of like, when we hire somebody, we want to find out like what their favorite candy bar is, their movie and drink. Right. And just randomly one day just show up with all that stuff and be like, here you go. They don't know at the time they, you just think they're getting to know you or whatever, but to actually execute on that, is, there's something about that moment. Um, Obviously, Simon Sinek, uh, the reason why, or uh, probably just messed up that title. But anyway, um, Simon Sinek on why, uh, Made to Stick uh, by Chip and Dan Heath. That's like kind of an older book, but man, it's so good. Um, and then uh, one of my favorite books uh, and my staff uh, is going to be required to read is um, Creating – or. Gosh, I just blinked and it was right there. Creating magic. Yeah, and it's it's the head, it's Lee uh, the author is Lee Cockrell, and he basically tells a story of how he went from hotels to managing Walt uh, Disney World, and Disney World Paris and Disney World in Orlando about how they operate, how they do things, and uh, I think if if your listeners, which are probably agency owners or customers or whatever, sure. I would, re I would definitely read that book because one, you can see the process all the way to Disney world that makes Disney. Yeah. So one of our favorite books is, um, be our guest by the Disney Institute. So 
It's uh, the kind of their guide to doing it the Disney way and how no, no customer should leave Disney without having had a great time. Uh, yeah. And that's, and then another that the team are all reading right now is This Is Marketing by Seth Godin, um, mm-hmm. which is just a great book about seeing marketing as relationship building and that the fact that there's marketable opportunities, whether you're selling cardboard boxes or if you're selling ice cream, it, that, there's always something. And yeah, readers okay, make Seth, readers. Seth, oh yeah, <laughs> Seth Godin is uh, the godfather of marketing, that is for sure. Yeah, but quite uh, an unknown name in the UK. So, Which is, uh, which is shocking considering how well he's good at marketing here in the states yeah uh, i'm surprised he hasn't leaked over in, uh, into the uk yeah I, I guess a big one over here that's that obviously makes a lot of noise gary v hits hard in the uk um, <laughs> oh gary v yeah yeah there's a uh, a love-hate relationship that i have uh with, with gary v because i i know that we talked before that i can i'm allowed to course, disagree or course, whatever yeah. but uh yeah yeah uh he, he's great over here. Uh, a lot of people talk about him. Uh, I think uh, that the you know coming up with ninety eight pieces of content a day or whatever he talks about, I'm just like, bro, I don't have time for that. Like, there's no way. But you know, he is great. He is a very good marketer. He did the wine stuff, mm-hmm. super amazing. Um, he's got great products, like. He's a marketing machine, but there's a there's definitely a lo- underlying love hate relationship. Like, yeah, you can't it, it, you can't okay. go on a podcast and and say that without giving away that you've got a team of a hundred people underneath you to make that happen. Yeah, um, you know what we were talking about before repurposing content, which is what Gary V is talking about in the extreme. To do it at the rate he does it. You literally yeah. need an agency dedicated to purely doing that, and oh, yeah. and you know, there's very few agencies in the world that can can actually can actually do that. It's yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's very jarring to see like twenty somethings, or really, I see twenty somethings trying to do it, do what Gary Vee does, and it's definitely tough. Like. Uh, I don't know if you have this in the UK or not, but over here we have these folks, uh, these like guys that they, that's basically they're like, Oh, I'm a marketing genius and look at my Ferrari and look at my big house and all this kind of stuff. And then you start to notice like uh, we have Airbnb here in the States where uh, there's always like a, uh, a posting, <laughs> yeah. right? There's a thing on the wall that's like, and then all of a sudden you're like, He's like, oh, yeah, I'm just hanging out in my house. I'm hanging out in the library or whatever he's trying to fake. And he's, like, walking around, and all of a sudden you see this sign of, like, dear guest. You know? Yeah, yeah. And it's like. Why have you got instructions like, on how to use the fridge on your fridge? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like, wait a minute. Hold on. Like, or the Ferrari stuff or Lamb- Lamborghinis. And so that's the one thing that I would tell everybody to be very careful of when you're listening to these influencers and stuff like that. Because the influencers is just that. There are people that just influence people but don't actually do anything. At sure. that point. And I'm probably going to get a lot of trouble for saying that. But at the same time, I have yet – like there's kids right now and there's people in high school here in the States that I'm like, hey, what are you going to be when you grow up? And they're like, I'm going to be an influencer. And I'm like, what does that mean? Like, yeah. you know, and that – and so – uh, our our marketing has gotten harder over the years because people say, "Oh, we need an influencer to market our brand," and I'm like, "Yeah, okay, you know, unless it's The Rock. Uh, I'm sure y'all have The Rock, Dwayne Twitter, Johnson. Right? Yeah, 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 I'm aware. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay, yeah, all right. He's cool. got tequila uh, too. Yeah, I know. I know. Gosh, man, <laughs> uh, it's uh, and George Clooney of all people. Oh no, and, and Ryan Reynolds, but he's just sold. I know. His. It's it's a, know. it's a hot We're market. Our, yeah, I shouldn't mention the uh, competitors of my client, but whatever. Sorry. Uh, it's, no, it's fine. I we're going to beat them anyway. So. Exactly. There's a lot See? of heads to topple. That's the. Everybody loves a drink. Come on, let's yeah. do it. Um, 
but yeah, I think uh, our marketing is coming harder uh, just with the influencer mentality. And uh, you just got to be careful. Like legitimate influencers are people like George Clooney, Sean sure. Reynolds, and The Rock. Not some, you know, 30-something that's living in his parents' basement or renting Airbnbs, right? Cool. Research the influencer. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we do a little bit of work with micro-influencers. Um mm. But the the results tend to come from the ones that have built their influence through a career. So, yep. um, to give an example, we work with somebody. Uh, they they manufacture outdoor knives, so kind of like camping knives, that kind of thing. So we found somebody who has a career working in the outdoors. They gen genuinely take people out for wild camping. They do kind of like Love adventure it. weekends, and we were like, oh do you want a nice set of knives basically? Yeah. Yeah. But you need to plug this company a few times. And, and that was far more effective than finding kind of like a career influencer, somebody who basically is kind of like a poster boy or girl for life. It's... Exactly. Oh yeah. Like if you can get like a beer grills to promote your outdoor <laughs> yeah. brand, yeah, that makes complete sense. Uh, you know, I, I yeah, I love the the micro influencer because uh, one, it's such a niche market that yeah. they can influence, right? And uh, yeah, we're uh, I'm on the same track. We're working with a company that's doing uh, barbecue like knives, like butcher cool. stuff, and uh, so we're trying to work with a micro influencer that's like actual pit master and that kind of stuff. But um, I love it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's much more fun when the person's passionate about the thing they're about to promote. That's, I guess that's the simple. That's how, we, that's how we all win, right? Yeah. If, if everybody involved is, uh, invested either emotionally, financially, whatever, it's a way better situation than just kind of buying somebody off the shelf and hoping it pans out. So <laughs> Okay, I, you've been so generous with your time, Chris. Um, yeah. I've got one last question. If you were to start a business tomorrow, what would it be, and how would you market it in the in the first instance? That's two questions. Yeah. Sorry, man. Well, I always want to say I would run a barbecue restaurant, but I feel like that's we've kind of killed the barbecue stuff. I'm a big golfer. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I love golf. I think if I could start a business tomorrow, it'd probably be a golf brand. Um, and, and I, I keep throwing around the idea of like, a, cause I'm a big dude and there's a lot of big guys that play golf and yeah. there's not very like cool looking apparel for the Husky. <laughs> sure. Uh, I like to call myself a Husky Don Draper. Uh, that's, like uh, that. Like that. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> so, yeah, if I if I could start it, I'd do like a, a cool lifestyle golf brand, um, and maybe sell some golf balls or something like that. But yeah, how I would do that is one, uh, you know, really kind of position ourselves as like almost grassroots because there's a lot of golf brands out there that that kind of really start large and then they just fizzle out. I think the reverse with golf, I think it's more like you make it kind of almost like a gentleman's club kind of thing of like, Oh, he's got a, uh, what you call it. And, uh, you know, or a hat or whatever. I really start to grow that way. Uh, I've seen that work really well in the golf side of things. There's a, there's a golf ball company that did that, uh, called vice golf ball. Sure. And they, they started really small. They were just, and now they're just exploded, but they were very grassroots, very, uh, you know, low key and they just wanted it to feel like a gentleman's club or feel like it was a secret kind of thing of like, Oh, this is the best golf ball to play with. So. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Um, and how do you, so how do you get that into the marketplace day one? What? Yeah. Uh, gosh, you put me on the spot, man. Uh, so I, I you know, one, one I, and we were talking about micro influencers. There's so many like pro golfers out there that have such a good social media presence of like, sure. Uh, I'll tell you a funny story here in a second, but, uh, about golf, but 
so basically probably reach out to like five to 10 pro golfers that have a pretty good following and generate kind of a lead magnet off of that. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, how to look, how to look great on a golf course and comfortable or whatever, something like that. Uh, I would definitely probably go through the social media sphere first, do a lot of video marketing, uh, and lifestyle shoots and stuff like that. And then, you know, obviously I don't mention a website because like website right now is table stakes, right? You gotta, you gotta have a website, but, uh, really the, the best way to do it is to just funnel people through the social media to get to your website. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the, the funny product story that I have of golf, uh, Nova Scotia, uh, in Canada, there's a, a place called Cabot cliffs. Uh, hopefully somebody's listening because the Cabot cliffs is one of my favorite golf courses on the planet. It's like number seven in the world or whatever. And, uh, so I went and played and the same week, the Canadian invitational was happening. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, so anyway, I took a picture in front of like these flags that say Canadian international or whatever it was and this big tournament. And I was like, well, I didn't win, but it was fun. And I posted it just joking. Well, this uh, company in the UK reached out to me that does golf nets. And I can't, I won't say the name because it feels embarrassing at this point. And uh, so they reached out, they said, Hey, can you review our net? We'll send you one. We just want you to post about it and be kind of our, you know, whatever. And I was like, sure. And I was like, and then all of a sudden like three or four different golf brands like reached out because they thought I was a pro golfer. And so in my basement right now, I have a swing room with, it's just all free because they thought that, uh, I was going to market their stuff. And I'm like, I'm not a pro golfer. I'm just a golf lover. And, uh, so anyway, I thought, when that happened, I was like, well, I, maybe I need to start posting more things and more free stuff will just show up to my doorstep. That's awesome. So, I mean, you've created an incredible niche in this conversation. You're kind of, you're a husky, barbecue-loving pro golfer. So, I love it. There, there's, there's very few of those, but it could be a lucrative market. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to change my LinkedIn profile right now. <laughs> Chris, you've been so, so generous with your time. I've, I've really enjoyed this. Uh, thank you for coming on the Stay Hungry podcast. Awesome. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me.